In this video, we're going to focus on setting up helpful options for the consumers of our API to use. These options are going to allow them to better target the data they're trying to fetch. Now the route we'll be focusing on in this video and in the next two videos is over in the task router. It is the second route right here, the get tasks route, where you can fetch all of your tasks. Now, why this route? We have a dozen or so different routes between the tasks and the user router, but the only one we're going to add these options to is this one. That's because this is the only one that's sending back an array of data. With all of the other routes, we get back a single document. With this one, we could potentially get back hundreds or thousands of documents, depending on how many are in the database. So why is that? Well, imagine I'm using the app for a couple of years and I go ahead and add a couple of tasks each day, knocking them out. Eventually, I'm going to have so many tasks in the database and using this request to fetch all of them is going to do two things. One, it's going to be slow because it has to fetch so many old and unnecessary documents. And two, it's going to be fetching things that the user interface isn't going to actually use. If I'm just trying to render the three tasks that I have not completed, there's no reason I should also have to fetch the other 2000 that are already completed. So what we're going to do is set up helpful options, allowing the consumer of the API to better target the data they want to get. And we're going to do this using the query string as part of the URL structure. And this is something we saw with the weather app way back when, just to refresh your memory. If we go into the weather app and we open up inside of utils, our forecast file in here, we had set up latitude and longitude as part of the URL that was via a URL parameter where it's part of the URL structure over in geocode. We had done it using the query string right here. We started with the question mark and we set up access token, setting it equal to the following value. Then we used limit to limit it to the first result. So this is the approach that we're going to be taking to allow the user to customize which task data they get back. So I'm going to collapse the weather app folder and I'll close down those two files. And we're going to start to focus on actually setting that up for get tasks. Let's explore the URL structure we'll be using before we actually write any code right here. It is get forward slash tasks. Now this is still going to return all of the tasks, both incomplete and complete that you've ever created. But optionally, if you want to, you can use the query string to set completed equal to true or to false. If you set completed equal to false, you'll only get back the tasks that you still need to do the incomplete ones where completed is false. If you set completed to true when making the request, you're only going to get back the ones that you've already done. And this could be useful if you're trying to show the user some sort of archive page where they can see all of the tasks they've finished. And now let's go ahead and set up the router down below to actually support this. And the first thing we need to be able to do is limit what tasks we get back. Now, if we were using tasks.find, we know how we could get that done by providing that first object and specifying completed to be true or false. But we can also do the same thing with populate. So let's see what that looks like right here. We're going to customize populate. No longer are we going to provide just the string tasks. Instead, we're going to provide an object. Now we still need to let it know we're trying to populate the tasks. If we provide an object, it expects that property name to be set on the following path. So path will equal tasks. So what we've done is we haven't changed any of the behavior yet. All we've done is refactored it, allowing us to explore new options. And one of the new options we have access to is match. Match is an object. And in here we can specify exactly which tasks we're trying to match. For example, I could match those where completed is equal to true. Now I'm only going to get the tasks that I've already completed over inside of postman. I have created a task for this user and it is incomplete, which means that if I do run read tasks, I would expect to get nothing back. And that's exactly what happens. Now, if I were to switch completed to false, I would expect to get my one task back. I'll save the file. 
rerun the same request from Postman once again, and that is exactly what shows up. So in the end of the day, this is exactly what we want to do. We want to customize this object, but we want to do it based off of the query string values provided. So let's go ahead and kick things off by setting it up over in the URL and figuring out how we can access it in Express. Right here, what I'm going to do is set up the query string using the question mark, and I am going to set completed equal to true. Now, once again, down below, we can see that it's automatically set up that key value pair under the params tab, and we can go ahead and fire this off to send off the request. Now, it still works. It's just not using that data. Over inside Express, let's go ahead and actually change that by setting things up on line one of our handler function. Now, we've already used request.query in the weather application. We had done this to get the address for the endpoint we created. We had used request.query.address. In this case, request.query.completed is going to contain the value that was used, whether it's true, false, nothing, or some other string altogether. Now, it's our job to figure out what we should provide on match. Should completed be false? Should it be true? Or should it not exist altogether? Remember, if we don't provide completed at all, I want to be able to get all tasks back regardless of their completed value. So to get this done, what we're actually going to do is the following. We're going to start off by creating an object, which will store in a variable called match. Then down below, we're going to use that as the value we provide for match. And since they have the same name, we can use the property shorthand. Now, along the way, we are going to potentially make some modifications to the match object. If completed is not provided, we won't change it at all, getting all tasks back, both complete and incomplete. If completed is provided, we will set a completed property on match to the correct Boolean value. So right here, we can set up our if statement to start to get this process done. What I'm going to do is set up if, and we are going to see if completed was provided. I'm going to look at request.query.completed. And then down below, we'll go ahead and do something if a value was provided. Now, in this case, we're trying to set match.completed equal to a Boolean. Now, even if someone types true, what we get back is not a Boolean. It is the string true. If someone types in false, what we get back is not a Boolean. It is the string false. So it's not as easy as just setting request.query dot completed equal to that value. This is not going to work as expected. And why? Because we're not setting completed equal to a Boolean. We're setting it equal to a string. It's going to be our job to take this and convert it into a Boolean value. What we're going to do is see if completed equals right here, the string true. So if this, which is a string, equals the string true, we'll set completed equal to true. If this, a string, does not equal true, whether it's false or anything else, we'll set completed equal to false. This is going to give us exactly what we want, where you have three options for specifying which types of tasks you want to get back. Now that we have this in place, we can actually test out our work from over inside of Postman. I'm going to save the tasks router and I'll leave this little line comment in place so we can remember the various ways we can request our data. And I'll head over to Postman. And the first thing we're going to need to do is create a couple of more tasks so we have some more interesting data to work with. Now, in this video and in the next two, we're going to continue to modify tasks and it'll be easier for us to make sure that our projects work as expected if me and you have the exact same task data. I only have one task so far for this user, and what I'm going to do is actually remove it and start from scratch. So I'll fire off a quick delete task request to remove that task, and once it's removed, we'll head back over to create task. And to give us some interesting data, we're going to create four tasks right here. The first one will be called first, and we are going to set the completed value equal to true. I recommend using the exact same data so it's easy for you to verify that your app is working as expected. I'm going to fire this off and down below we can see it's been created. Next up, I'll create a task with the description second, 
and I will set the completed value for this one to false. That's been created down below. We're going to create two more. The next one will have the description of third since it is our third task. I will toggle this back to a completed value of true, which is showing up down below. And then finally, the fourth task with the description of fourth and a completed value of false. So I'm trying to give us some variable data so we can actually see how all of this is going to work in the real world. We have some tasks that are completed and others that are not. Now back over here, let's go ahead and remove the query string and fire that request off. We should see our four tasks. I have first, second, third, and fourth. Now I'm going to set up completed once again and make sure it's working as expected. So if I set completed equal to true, I would expect to see first and third, the two tasks which are completed, and that is exactly what I'm getting down below. Now if I were to set completed equal to false or anything else, I would expect to see just second and fourth, which are my two tasks that have not been completed. And there we go, they're showing up as expected, which is fantastic. So now there are three ways you can fetch your tasks. You can get all of them or just the complete ones or just the incomplete ones. Now that we have this in place, we're gonna move on to the next video and continue to learn how we can customize this request. The next thing we're gonna talk about is pagination. It is a really important topic, which I'm excited to get to. So let's go ahead and jump right in.